Hey everybody, it's Andy. Welcome to a special Friday edition of Live Office Hours where I help you build a career you love. Happy March 1st to everybody. Hope you are doing well. Hope you're doing well. Get in the chat. Let me know who you are. Let me know where you're from. Let me know what you need. If you've got a question, Make sure you put a bunch of question marks in front of it because the chat gets lively and I want to be able to pick it, pick it out because I have one quick announcement and then we're going to dive right into your questions or one or two quick announcements. But I just like to say hello first to everybody. So get in the chat. If you are in any of the Mile Walk Academy programs, please use your hashtags and let people know you're a boot camper or an iTeamer and share your story. It's always helpful for people who are interested in joining. They want to know how you've been transformed as being part of the programs. Now, one other thing. I actually want to make a an additional welcome. Y'all finally did it to me. You finally did it to me. This is for the newcomers. In the history of my YouTube channel, which is a few years old, I have always prided myself on being able to keep up with your comments and your questions, and I love to reply to everybody, and thank you for engaging, but you did it to me this week. You did it to this, me this week. I could not keep up, and I'm sure that has everything to do with the fact that in the history of my little YouTube channel, this has been... The most wonderful week because we have so many more new subscribers that have joined my community to the 25,000 new people that have joined me since last Saturday. I want to say hello to you and welcome. So this is probably your first live office hours session. So if you're a new timer, let me know you discovered me recently. Let me know you're a new timer so I can give you a shout out in the chat and also all of my wonderful veterans in my community will give you a big Andy hug and we'll welcome you. And for you new timers and my beloved old timers, we have got a great March plan for you and I just wanna let you know what that calendar looks like. Because normally, you know me, I love my routines. I like to be here on Thursday at noon Eastern, 11 Central, but March is a little different. So we're having a special event today, or a special session today. Next Thursday the 7th, I'll be here. The following week on the 14th, I'll be here. And then the following week, I'm actually going to be here Monday the 18th, Tuesday the 19th, and Wednesday the 20th. I'm going to do a three-day run uh, on, on some leadership stuff. And in between the kind of the mid-month and that little, little three-day bonanza, I'm going to be running a nine-day Master Your Craft Challenge where you'll, you'll have to sign up for that if you want those emails and those little videos and the beautiful workbook that I'm creating for you on, on, on your daily challenges. It's gonna be fantastic. So we've got six sessions in March. Last thing I wanna mention as people are shuffling in is we just wrapped up the Career Accelerator program. It is now completely recorded. It is a five module program in elevating your career. So in January, we created a new job search bootcamp. We did a live, a live round. And then in February, we created this program, the Career Accelerator, the Career Accelerator program. All of that's done. We finished yesterday, that's why I'm here today. And we're not gonna be having any promotions until April. So the, um, the next live bootcamp is in April, mid-April, but, but, and I'm not gonna email you about this, if you're here with me right now, or you're watching this this weekend, March 1st, 2nd, or 3rd, I decided, because we have so many new people who've never been introduced to those programs, I'd love for you to check them out. And if you do, instead of paying 600 bucks or whatever the package is right now, we'll give you a $100 off coupon if you just put in, I think it's live 100 off. Kara will put it in the chat. I'm not gonna show you anything. You can go figure that out on your own. I just wanted to make mention of it because I'm super pumped about this thing. And if you've, if you've recently joined my uh, community or even if you've been with me for a while and you didn't have a chance to enroll, I want you to have that chance at a discount. So I hope, I hope that helps. And so you'll get it for $4.97. You'll get both of them. The Career Accelerator program alone is, is $3.97. So, so I hope that helps. But welcome. I Let's get into the chat. Four minutes. I said I could say all that in four minutes, and I did. All right. Let's see what we got. Kevin Martinez got here at 1014. The early bird catches the worm. I guess that's the expression. And I am ready with my hello. Can I help you cup? All right, Kevin. So I love this question. Hi, Andy. Can you please provide advice on how to find a 100% remote job? I currently work remotely on a contract that is ending soon and do not want to return to a cubicle farm. Smiley face. Kev, I, 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 know, I know the feeling, man. I know the, I know the feeling. So here's, uh, here's a couple things for you. First thing is I created a video 
And by the way, this this is for anybody who is interested in finding a remote job or relocating or who's open to relocating, but really anybody who's searching because a lot of what we're doing uh, these days, you know, job searching, a lot of it is done online anyway, but I have a video out there called how to uh, get an out of state job. Now that could be an out of the country job. It could be an out of the state job. It could be a down the block job. So Kevin, I'd point you to that one first and there's nine techniques and things that you should do if you're interested in doing this remotely. But there is a website um, and I don't know if it's like remote.co or something like that, but there are, and I don't know if it's a aggregator or what, but there's a there's a site that's out there that, uh, that I know a number of the people in the community have recommended that they've used it to find remote jobs. And actually maybe, uh, Kara, could you, uh, whatever that proper site is, could you put that in the chat? Uh, so Kevin and the others who are interested can grab it. So I hope that helps you, Kevin. Thanks for showing up early, my friend. Connie Cotter, one of our beloved boot campers from Wisconsin. Connie, great to have you back. I, you know, I missed you while you were on vacation, and you missed some of those live uh, shows. Rodrigo, nice to be communicating with you on. I did actually, I did connect with you on YouTube in the comments. So I, I'm getting familiar with you and your questions, and I appreciate them. All right, here you got one. So Rodrigo asks, applied for a position at a dream employer with a referral link, okay, accidentally answered yes to Vita's sponsorship question, got rejected with what appeared to be an automated message. I'm sure that will happen. Should I reapply? So yes, you should reapply. However, the first thing that I would do, and I recommend this in my videos, I recommend this in the programs, and we technique-wise, the applicant tracking systems, the ATSs, or corporate portals, or you know whatever the the submittal site is, uh, uh, you know any of the career sites like the ladders and Yahoo Hot Jobs and Monster and Career Builder, all those Indeed and so on. Um, you're going to go into an applicant tracking system. I always recommend that you uh, do do a couple things. Number one, you try to network your way in. So I've created some videos on how to locate those people, how to job, uh, how to network when job searching, so that you can actually find somebody that you can send your submission to via email. That's one thing that I would do. Second thing that I would do is I also have a video out there on three free tools for your resume to beat the applicant tracking system. I would do that so that you optimize your resume, That and all those tools are free, obviously, uh, so that you can optimize your resume for the submittal to raise the, uh, the probability that you will actually get it through to, a, to some human eyeballs. So that, that's the second thing that I would do. And then once you do those step one and step two, uh, if you you know you can't find somebody that you can send it to directly, but even if you can find it to to send it to somebody directly, I would still recommend watching the video on the three free tools because that'll help you optimize your resume and put it in alignment with what the job description is. Okay, so it's it's it, those would be really helpful. And then if you aren't able to find somebody to go direct, then what I would do is I would reapply through the applicant tracking system. Make sure you you don't check what shouldn't be checked and you're checking what should be checked. And I think all of that will substantially raise your odds. So Rodrigo, I hope that helps you, my friend. And thanks for all the questions that you gave me this week. And I think I was able to get to most of them and I'm glad I got to answer one here for you live. All right, then there's me. Christina, how are you? And that message was retracted. Hopefully I answered it before I... Good morning from Chile, Los Angeles. Man, it's 28 degrees out right now where I am. And when I was out this morning, it was a heck of a lot colder. Bill is telling me he forgot to put the question marks, but I don't see your question yet. Bill, maybe haven't got to it. Carrie, how are you? Ozan, data scientist with 12 years. Great to have you. Oh, there's a question in there. I see it. Okay. Hi, Andrew. I'm a data scientist with a, with a, a total of 12 years of software engineering experience from London. Wonderful. Over the last four years, I am dedicated to data science. How can I offer my dual career? Ozan, uh, what, I'm not sure what you mean. You you Are you looking for a career as a data scientist, but you but you are concerned that the previous 12 years are are wait i'm data science with 12, software engineering so are you concerned that the previous 12 years will drag you down 
If your question is, how do you represent yourself to find data scientists' positions, and you, but the fact that you have 12 years of software engineering experience you feel might skew the, you know, you got 16 years of experience, but only four, or maybe it's 12 with the last four or, or 16 with the last four. One thing that I would do is I would check out my career profile videos. If you go to the YouTube channel and you just search for career profile, I will show you how to package that mixture so that you're highlighting what you want to highlight. If that's your question, if you're concerned about your representing your marketing material into the world. If that's not your question, can you go to the bottom of chat, please clarify what your what your question is. And so, so as you guys ask me these questions, just try to be super explicit, even if you need to use multiple strings, you know, tighten them, put them together closely, I'll, I'll find them. But uh, Ozen, if you if you can clarify that for me, if I didn't hit that one on the head, I'd be happy to, to spend a little more time. Kara could slack it to me. All right. Carrie, great to have you from Valparaiso. Tony R. Love it, Tony. And as a matter of fact, the reason we're not doing a, a boot camp in the last week of, uh, of March is because my wife and I are heading to Nashville and I'm not going to be doing you know one of these from Honky Talk Central. Hey, Pamela. Manisha, how are you? Dr. Manisha. Yeah, one of our beloved boot campers. I, I love having you in the program. You're such a great, um, a great part of the community. All right, Christina, maybe you got your question back in here. Returning to the workforce after a year and a half of backs. Okay, but I'm not able to work. Uh, I'm not, but am able to work with no restrictions. Awesome. Do I mention the back problem or the surgery? No, no. So, so, um, so a couple, couple things. Let's, let's expand. This is such a great question. Let's expand Christina's question. If you have a medical issue that requires special considerations, accommodations, and other things, you need to disclose it, okay? And you just need to tell them. And hopefully the employer will love you enough where they'll be able to make those accommodations. If you have had an ailment and you are free of the ailment, you've had, um, heaven forbid, you've had cancer, uh, you've had something that required a lot of rehabilitation, back surgery, my wife has had back surgery, I saw what that was like, it took her a year and a half to rehab it, um, and so if you are A-OK, -okay, there's no reason you have to let them know that. People have surgeries all the time. Dad just had shoulder surgery last week. So so anyway, I just want to, uh, to let you know that no, if you do not need any accommodations, then you don't need to mention it. If, you, and if you're free and clear, if you are, heaven forbid, you are a cancer patient now and you're getting treatments and other things and you're going to be out of work, uh, you know, a day a week for what, you know, chemo or something of that nature, then I would obviously bring it to their attention because you, you want them to know that. And I, I, I understand that that in many ways can uh, preclude you uh, from being hired if they need you to be present. But I, I'm, I'm always going to default to... Um, honesty is the best policy, and I would I would try to be a straight shooter about that. So I hope I hope that helps. Joshua, great to see you, bud. And Mal, how are you? Steve G, great to have you in the interview intervention group. I see you're in there posting. I love it, Lorenzo, with one of my favorite names. Yes, my London Italian friend. Steve, I didn't know you were Canadian. All right, Pamela, I see you got a question. 60-year-old career changer, college graduate that has not worked in five years, how do I write the resume? Do I lead with last career or graduating from college? Wonderful question. So a couple, couple of things. So you obviously have work experience and, you know, let's say you've got, so, you know, maybe 30 years of experience, give or take. What, here's how I recommend that you do this. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with the Andy LaCivita Ultimate Resume Template, just very quickly, I am a huge proponent of the career profile, which is like a summary, and then some highlights, like three highlights, big home run things that you've done, and then you go into your work experience, and then you, you have your education. That's the professional template, so not for your recent college graduates or those looking for summer internships and things of that nature. So you, I basically have a college version and a pro version, and even in the college version, I like you to have a profile. We don't call it a career profile, we just call it a profile. And if you're a recent college grad, 
go get that. You can watch the video on this one trick will make your college resume stand out. Profile, then your education, then whatever work experience you have, and then any main uh, school projects or other thing, volunteer work that's, that's extracurricular. Now, we have situations where people like Pamela are in, uh, in, in the work, work world and they've either, they have a gap. That's okay, these things happen. I actually have a video on how to handle gaps. And, but if you went to school and, that you're, and, and you did this recently, as in you did it now, and you got a degree that is going to help you become more credentialed in wherever it is you want to go, not where you've been, then what I would do is I would pull up and make the education section underneath the career profile, much like I was a recent college graduate. Then I would go into the highlights and then the work ex experience section. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is if you don't want to pull the education forward, at the end of the career profile, you can also put a sentence in, I, and if you watch the career profile videos, the free videos that I have out there, I show you exactly how to write it, exactly what it needs to look like. And at the very end, I would put recently graduated from such and such with a degree in such and such. So, so you, could do, you could do that as well. The five years that you haven't worked, uh, I, I, almost, I almost don't even, you know, you don't even have to explain that. Now, if you went to school and you were getting your degree, that's one thing. If you were a stay-at-home parent or grandparent or whatever, it makes no difference. You're taking care of a husband, a spouse, a sister, a brother, the parents, whatever. It's okay. You don't need to do a lot of explaining on the resume. In fact, I, don't, I wouldn't want you to do that. But you could just say, if, if you were in school, you know, recently graduated, and if they see, oh, you haven't worked since you know, 2014, uh, you, in the cover letter or your email, you could explain, I was studying it in school or I was doing this and that. And while I was doing this and that, I actually got my degree in this and that. Something like that. That's how I would handle it. And Steve, thank you for the coaching. And yes, the question marks in front are always, always super helpful. And I try to go slowly enough because I hate it when I miss your questions. All right. And Mal, how are you? Can you please tell me what an interviewer wants to see in a resume? I sure can. Okay, so so in your case, okay, you're you're a fresher, so so I'm gonna answer you directly. For all you non-freshers, for all you non-freshers, I have a video out there called "How to Make Your Resume Stand Out" or uh, "What an Employer Wants to See in a Resume." I have multiple videos. Check out the videos in my resume playlist you can swipe right across them and look at the, the thumbnails are pretty straight away and you can see that one other announcement is i am doing a free resume writing class Ugh. april 12th maybe it's a friday it's free it's deep am i I'm not even gonna sell you anything so it's it's like a awesome awesome resume free class. You should keep an eye out for that. And as a matter of fact, actually, you know what, Kara, can you, can you just put the link to that? Because you can, you can register for that now. It's limited. So it's better to register early. And then we've got a whole pregame for you and all that stuff. So you can check out the page. It's, it's, it's up. Now, on your question, Anmal, what I would do as a, as a student is that I just got done talking to Pamela about you know, a career profile at the top, even if you're a college student, a, a, a profile at the top. And what I love to do, and, and the reason why I recommend doing this, even if your you know, university recommends that you do not, when I look at something, when, whenever you pitch something to somebody, you tell them something, it's always important for them to have context of what's coming. The better the context, the, the happier I am, the easier it is for me to find what I need. And it also, you are what we call controlling the narrative. You are feeding me the information that you want me to know about you. So what I love to do in a college student or recent college graduate's resume is at the top, put a little profile that talks about, you know, I am a recent graduate in, of, you know, I'm a recent mechanical engineering graduate from whatever the university is. You know, with any specialty studies, if there's subcategories or whatever, 
anything that you've gained in work experience with internships focused on or whatever and you know chaired committees of volunteered at this and that anything that you want to give me like it's like your little reader's digest version of you i love that then go into your education lay it out then inside your your uh work experience section if you have any i mean the one thing that they want to see is what have you been doing uh extra from an extracurricular standpoint have you worked have you worked a part-time job did you have an internship whatever you have and put those in now the more related your internships are to what your field of study is the better but i recognize it's not always uh, something that you can do so any work experience is cool i had you know i was an electrical engineer okay so i have a double e degree bachelor's of science in electrical engineering i worked at blue cross and blue shield uh during some of the summers and in the winter month and the spring break and then in my later last summers i had an internship or two but i put all that stuff in because it all counts so what i don't care if you're parking cars i don't care if you're waiting tables it makes no difference and then what you want to do is you want to try to draw out those traits and characteristics and experiences that you've and skills that you've grown through that work so if you look at the job descriptions that the employers have even for recent college graduates you can see the traits they're looking for i would try to highlight that into into the body of your work experience or your volunteer experience or your school projects you college students play around with the template if you don't have a ton of work experience then did you do some volunteer work or do you have some special school projects that you might want to call out you can put all that stuff in there so i would highly recommend doing that and and then i also as a college student that um as i was mentioning to kevin earlier right out of the gate about those three free that video three free tools for your resume to beat the applicant tracking system i would run it through the same through the same process uh when, when i get my resume done and and basically one of those tools is uh is job scan which allows you to take the job description and the text from your resume put it in and it kind of marries it up and matches it tells you where you got gaps and those kind of things so check that out and whoa my mom is here so everybody better be nice to me uh mom is here and 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 if you know if my wife sometimes jumps on in the middle of the school day but uh but hey mom love you say hi to dad hope the shoulder's good all right and Steve, uh, my mom is a saint. That's my mom. My, uh, and thank you for that kind remark. And my wife, uh, Linda, with a Y, L-Y-N-D-A, is, is my wife. So occasionally she jumps on my YouTube channel and, and, uh, and, and, and says, hey, I love you, and what a nice video. Dan Morris. Wait, Dan Morris, I got one for you. I think you're on vacation the 3rd through the 11th. We're going to start the challenge on the 12th. How about that, buddy? I waited for you to get back tell me this is the love you get when you're a boot camper i rearranged the whole schedule to fit the boot campers lives tell me that ain't awesome all right and steve you're becoming my new favorite here but you're gonna have to really work to take over dan and connie and some of these boot campers oh nice Hey, by the way, what Dan is Dan Morris? Oh, hey Rohit, how you doing? What Dan Morris is talking about is I use the Brendan Burchard High Performance Daily Planner. In case anybody was wondering, I have oh man, I, it's over there. I use a field notes book for shrapnel and ideas that come, so I can immediately document. I use a Lecterm 1917 journal for my daily journaling, and for to run my work life, I use the Brendan Burchard High Performance Planner. You can check all those out if you want. And that's awesome that you got the full year pack. James Palmer, where you been, man? All right, 44, looking for a career in writing and slash marketing. So I'm wondering if you mean like copywriting, uh, but I can't get hired. What are some careers that aren't marketing related that I could get with a marketing background? Love it. Okay, so folks, now for all y'all that don't know a whole lot about marketing, this the way I'm going to package this up, you're all going to get this because you all get it because you're consumers of stuff, even if you don't understand all the marketing philosophies and concepts and the way companies break down the marketing units. There's many different ways to market. So as a company, and depending on what the company is, so you can have TV commercials and mass media and you know, get in the papers, get in the magazines, get on the billboards, and so on. That's one. 
You can do event marketing. So you can go to events and seminars and trade shows and those kind of things. That's another type of marketing. And James, besides, I don't know uh, what your marketing forte is, but these are some options. So, you know, and, and think about event management and planning and all that good stuff that goes along with that. So that, that's an element. There's also online marketing. And online marketing can come in different formats. So you imagine you've got somebody who's in the marketing department that is, and actually this is not a technology person, this is somebody with a marketing mind that's looking at and evaluating how people are finding them. There's obviously a technical component for those of you familiar with search engine optimization, right? Everybody wants to be on the top of Google. And if you're not on the first page of Google, people don't, you know, people's attention spans are short and they don't really follow. So there's an element of um, online marketing to do with customers finding you. There's an element of online marketing that we call content marketing. That's what I do. So all of you, you found me a couple of different ways. You had a problem and you went to YouTube and you said, I need to know how to write a resume. Boom, you saw a yellow card with my silly face and you clicked it and you watched it. That is an element of content marketing, but it's designed because I know that there are people with those issues. But there's also a link that I circulate on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Twitter, and so on, where people can say, oh, who's that guy? He's got a, you know, a, a, a resume video. That's content marketing. I'm giving you content. So there's lots of ways to do that. Then there's also, once you attract people through the search engine marketing or the content marketing, there's email marketing. So I have to be, I, I me personally, because I write, everything you read, I write. Everything you see, I did, I thought from this crazy head. So there's copywriting. So the messages that I send you, every week you get a Tuesday message, that's, that's well, that's me adding value, but there's an element of copywriting in it. Then sometimes you get sales emails from me. I have to write those. That's, those are sales messages, still, still it's email marketing. So there's elements of that that, you know, that are important. Then there's what, what, what is um, called bulk marketing. So bulk marketing could be, uh, and by the way, this is not going away. While people generally buy what's in front of them online, so what they're seeing in Facebook, their Instagram feeds and so on, what will never go away, I, you mark my words, what will never go away is when you mail somebody something. Why? Because they open their mail. And if, if you give me a box, so LinkedIn, wait, oh God, I don't have it. Um, LinkedIn, wait, it was about this size. This is eyeglass cleaner, by the way. LinkedIn mailed me a box to my house and with Tabasco sauce in it. Actually, if you're on my Facebook page, groups you probably saw a picture it's about this size and it literally was tabasco it had a linkedin had a linkedin label on it they wanted me to spice up my marketing or something goofy right i open you better believe i'm going to open that thing what is that so there are ways to run marketing campaigns through the mail you could you know you could have a flyer like this or you could have a, a book right i do a book gives you free books right and and so on so there's there's other things like that you could do all that's fair game all that's fair game. You got a marketing background. I'm guessing you intersect some of these other things. There's a, there's a few others, but you get my point. Um, that's the kind of stuff that I would be looking at. And then if you're in the copywriting side uh, or you're writing white papers or other things, you, have, you wanna have sample work that you have developed. So that's, that's what I would look at. So for all y'all marketers out there, there's, it, it is a wonderfully complex and super fun and very challenging um, uh, job. It really is. It really is. All right, Rico, how you doing? Rohit, you're welcome. Oh, love it. Jeanette Kearns, how you doing? Okay, I'm going to give you a little bit here. Uh, Jeanette is asking, Andy, can you offer some insight on the third-party recruiters who often bombard me with calls and emails for one open consulting position? Uh, oh, you know, you're using some language there that is going to uh, make me speculate here. I am contacted by many recruiters. Oh, thank you for clarifying. Uh, for the same position. Okay. Uh, by the way, I am going to answer your question. I do have uh, some videos coming out on recruiters. 
and we did a live show about uh, working with recruiters. I highly recommend you check the live office hour streams for that. That's corporate recruiters, okay? Now, so that's out there. It's already out there on the channel. And for all of you who are, are, are interacting with recruiters, check that out because you're gonna get a lot of behind the scenes stuff of what's actually happening. Now, what Jeanette is asking about is there are third party search firms. Milewalk, my company, so the Andy Lasavita universe is broken up into two things. There's Milewalk, which is my executive search firm, and there's the Milewalk Academy, which is my offerings to you as individuals. Milewalk, the search firm, what Jeanette is referring to is as a third party recruiter, organizations engage Milewalk as a uh, third party recruiter to work on their behalf to go out into the market and find people for a job or that job or several jobs or whatever it is with their organization. Now, what Jeanette is um, asking is if there is a situation where you as maybe on LinkedIn or wherever you know your your public persona is, what what does happen sometimes, and I'm guessing in, in, in Jeanette's case here, an organization can set up an arrangement with a third party recruiter in a couple of different fashions. I'm gonna give you just the simplest here because I think it'll illustrate the point. There are contingent recruiters and there are retained recruiters. There's various com you know, combinations of those, but for, for, for purposes of simplicity, this'll get you what you need. When somebody retains a uh, third-party recruitment firm. Milewalk is a retained recruitment firm. So an organization is paying just us. They're paying up front and along the way as we work the search and we would be the only one contacting you because we are the only one contracted with them because that's smart because they already paid some money. So what they don't want to do is work with contingent recruiters who don't get paid anything typically unless they hire you. So what some companies incorrectly think is that if I have multiple search firms working on my one position, then I have a three times as good a chance of finding them three times faster if I've got three firms working it. Now, here's what actually happens. Two of those firms, if they're really smart, they don't work it because like I'm not gonna spend my time on the off chance that you might hire my candidate when you got some other people that are out into the market contacting the same people we're contacting and trying to entice them to talk with us so we can put them into the process and we can represent the individual. So what but 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 if the if the company is not up front with the recruitment firms that there are other well that's silly because the recruitment firm should ask the company, is anybody else working on this? Because this kind of stuff happens and what it typically does for organizations who are using contingency recruiters is it cheapens the opportunity. If this opportunity is so golden, then you ought to have one, the best search firm who can surgically go out into the market, find and evaluate the right people, get you the right person, do it in a reasonable amount of time, and so forth. And what you're ultimately trying to get is a long-term match. So what's happening in your case, Jeanette, is you've got multiple contingency search firms that are working on behalf of an organization with a position. Now, I don't really care. It one of those firms, if you like the job that they're that they're presenting to you, there's nothing wrong with you going and engaging and off you go and interact with them. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, from a candidate perspective, I think from a recruitment firm perspective, it kind of stinks. But actually, we're going to do a whole show on this. So more of that to come for you about working with executive search firms. It'll be something catchy. So, so check, uh, check, keep an eye out for that. But if you want more insight on the, on the corporates, uh, check, check that out on the live office hour streams. Scott, how are you? Kristen, hey. Just slow. Hey, Stacy. Dave, Kizer, Kizarian, welcome. Any recommendations on getting past the roadblock of being at one company for too long, 16 years? It's been painful to hear I wished you worked at a few different companies. You know what? I'll be honest with you, Dave. This is a, this is, and I've, everything I say is my opinion, uh, but I'm going to give you an opinion here. First thing is 16 years is 
you know, I don't, I don't know if you're say 38 and you know you graduated college, you took a job and you've stayed. That's okay. Uh, you're loyal, and if you have gone through the ranks, meaning you know you you started out, I don't know what you do, but you know you were an analyst and then you were a designer and then you were a manager and so on and so forth, and you kind of get kept getting promoted. To me. While you were at one company, you've held a number of different positions. Maybe you've worked in different areas. And as long as there's a nice evolution, what's wrong with that? As a matter of fact, let's talk about this. 16 years, right? It's what? 2019. Let's go back to 2003. You went through 2003, 4, 5, 6, 7. The market craters. I don't care where you I don't care what country you live in. I don't care where you, you know. Where, where are you from? You endure a market melee, right? For how many years, right? And so you're, you're through these gyrations, you are making it as a, an employee, which I'm guessing is in great standing over a, actually we had multiple dips in there, but we had one really bad dip, right? And then we climbed out again and so on and so forth. So, so I, I don't see the problem. I mean, in your resume, you need to highlight what it is that you have done over these 16 years and the evolution and the freshness of each. I would rather have somebody who worked 16 years at one company who, who went through the, uh, got through the cycles and promotions than somebody who worked at four companies for four years each and has been a project manager at every one of them. You follow me? So I, 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 what I'm, I mean, what I'm getting at here is I realize that some people might say that to you. That's just not your company. They're not looking for the right kind of people, in my opinion. That variety, while in, in, in some cases it is, is important, in most cases it's not. In most cases it's not. And I would rather have the person with the longevity. So, I mean, you might need to, you might need to polish up your resume a bit better. And, 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 and folks, one, one thing, that, don't minimize this. You know, I use that expression, controlling the narrative earlier and and so here's what happens when your resume lands on somebody's screen and they look at it they start to form an impression of you from the time they look at your name and then they skim down now what you want to do is you want to present yourself in a way that formulates the impression that you want them to have about you so if you go right into your work experience then I have to look at everything you've done and I have to put a narrative together on my own about you I have to create your executive summary for you in my mind that's actually what has to happen I would rather you spoon feed me what you want me to see and what you want to highlight okay now that gets carried from the resume and my my screening of the resume into the interview process because now you've given me a script that goes along with what you want to present to me and what you're sharing with me about your background is does the script say yeah i've been at one company but look at all these different things i've learned and not i might have been in the same unit but i, I learned how to design implement manage the budgets so on i got like eight or ten different core competencies that i've developed at this one company so has your 16 years been 16 years or is your 16 you could be at four companies and your 16 years could be one year 16 times over you just keep managing projects it's the same year over and over again it's just the same thing so you want to paint the narrative from early on from the paper goes into the mind of the reviewer goes into the mind of the interviewer actually controls the narrative of the interview and what you how you tell them about yourself how you walk them through your resume and all that good stuff don't minimize that people just don't pay attention to that stuff there is everything works in sync from the time you fill in to get the resume in front of the right person and fill out the app all the way until the time you make your counter offer and accept that job. All right, hope that helps. Dan Morris, yes. Uh, you know what, Kara, can we just make a note? Let's get that word back in the boot camp uh, downloads for the, um, uh, for the fourth and fifth uh, sessions for the Career Accelerator program. All right, Steve, what do you got? Steve, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fill in some stuff here for you. I'm, this is what I'm assuming you're saying. A recruiter, third party, got to you, got you in front of his or her client with a job description. You went in and talked to the people and discovered through your live dialogue that the job description does not match what you heard. 
So, first thing you do, make sure you heard them correctly. I mean, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt, but pause before you do anything. Did I actually hear that correctly? Then you want to go back to the recruiter and you want to say, hey, you know what? I came out of the discussion. This is what I thought I heard. This is what they're telling me the job is. It's Actually, it's not that. So I was excited when I thought this was the job, but I'm not as excited. Can we double check that I heard them correctly? Now that recruiter should have a relationship with the people. You make the recruiter go back and clarify that you heard correctly. And Steve, I don't know if you have watched my free webinar, Three Keys to Ace Any Job Interview, but one of the things I talk about it, that I beat to absolute death in that webinar are the eight communication tripwires that occur in an interview. One of them is you misunderstood what it was they were saying, and they're all, you know, it goes both ways. But the one thing that you should do before you make any decision is make sure what you heard is correct. Okay, let's say it is. Let's say the recruiter goes back to the company and says, okay, you know what, Steve, you're right. I did not realize that. You say, listen, no problem. I love that first, you know, I love that what I thought the job was, but I just don't think this is for me. And I love working with you. Um, can you, you know, please keep me in mind for something that, that is closer to that. You're not burning a bridge. Actually, you're saving them a bunch of time because you keep going through that process only to get down to the end to not want to do it. Now you're wasting your time, you're wasting their time, and you're wasting the recruiter's time. Just remember this. I'm an executive recruiter. When I talk to somebody and I'm interviewing them, I'm, I'm interviewing you, Steve, I decide I like you and I want to put you in front of my client. The one thing that I guarantee you is the first and foremost thing on my mind is I don't want to waste my time. Okay, so while I, I want to make a match and I want you to get in the right spot, I do not want to spend a lot of time with you if you're not going to ultimately take this job at the end. So, because I've got to debrief you, i got to prep you, i got to debrief you, and so on. This goes on and on and on for weeks. So keep that in mind. You're not going to burn a bridge. Just handle it the way I recommend it and just make sure you're open and you are communicating. The recruiter will appreciate the honesty, but you better make sure that you, what you heard is correct. And I hope I read that right. All right, I hope that helps you. Leslie, great to see you. Krista, how you doing? Did you get the did you get the yellow planner? I can't wait to open up my yellow one, man. I got the orange one right now. Chris, how you doing? Another boot camper. Mike Morgan, one of the nicest guys in the world. You are welcome. Have a job offer, and I think it's because of Andy's stuff. You know what, buddy? We so appreciated your comment last week. I think we took a screenshot of it uh, because that was just awesome. Thank you for that. Joshua Khalid, hey. Connie Cotter, yep, this is so great. Daryl Newman, how you doing? Let's see what we got. I was asked the question in an interview to provide a 30, 60, and 90 day work schedule. Okay, I love that. Uh, interviewer had no idea how the successful candidate would be evaluated, raised a big red flag. You know what? Okay, um, let, let's make sure we're clear for anybody who doesn't, who isn't intimately familiar with some of the recommendations that I give you. Okay, I love, I have no problem with companies asking you 30, 60, 90 days, what would you do? What would you plan? How would you run yourself? How would you run your team? Whatever it might be. That's totally cool, okay? And especially if you're in like a sales uh, position or you're building out a, a new unit or any of that stuff, good stuff. But one question, and uh, I think I think I did a whole video on this one, but one of the questions that you should ask uh, in any in any interview is, and 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 I want to qualify this by saying this is a question you should ask somebody who is equipped to answer it, like your boss or your boss's boss, is if 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 you were to give me an offer and I was to accept it, or or anybody whoever accepts this job, in a year from now, what will that person have done exactly? What will they have accomplished? that you would consider success. So specifically, what does success look like a year from now? If your boss or the management team cannot answer that question, I kind of, and I'm kind of being silly here, but I would get out. I would like, if they don't know what success looks like, you will never know what success looks like and you'll be like, you know, running back and forth trying to figure that out. And that is not a good, and how do you know that what they're going to be measuring you against is realistic, that those are goals you can attain, that that is reasonable, that the resources are there to be able to do that, and so on. So that's a very, very big red flag. And I think that's what Daryl's getting at. I hope I hit that one. 
uh, on the you know the nail on the head. But you can't ask. You know, if you're talking with the HR person or you're talking with the recruiter up front or you're talking with, you know, somebody in a different department or whatever, you can't necessarily ask that question unless, I mean, you could ask it at a kind of a softer level, like to the HR person, hey, um, just, you know, I'm curious, what what would a successful person be doing in this role? What what, what, what will they have accomplished, do you think, in just in generalities? You know, what, what's it, what are key points to being successful and you kind of soften it up but when you get your boss and your boss's boss you really want them to nail down this is what success looks like to me so and and by the way it is fair of them to say you know what i know we want to implement this system but you're the expert and we're hiring you because of that and actually what i'm looking for you to do is lay out the foundation and the timeline and the this and that that's why we're hiring you so the first bit of success is you putting a plan together and letting me know the resources we need and what we need to do, and then we'll adjust the timeline or whatever, you know, to do that. We will give you the resources to build out your sales team. We'll give you the resources to implement that IT project or whatever. So that's, I'm cool with all that. David Bennett, welcome aboard. Can we give David Bennett a big live office hours hug? All right. Another new timer with the new handle. Sam, how are you? Great to see you, buddy. Julio from Portugal, don't tell me it's 75 degrees, please. It's 28 here. Got a first, okay, Julio, got a first yesterday. Collective interview with nine other candidates preceded by knowledge test. Okay, 30 minutes. The group activities were told, geez. That's all right, buddy, you're a smart guy. I know you're a smart guy. I've seen you on screen in our Zoom sessions. All right. Hey there, how are you? I don't know how to pronounce that name, but that is one cool looking name. Jen Johnson, how are you? Great to have you. You know, I used to work with a Jennifer Johnson about a thousand years ago, and I'm sure that there are about a bajillion Jennifer Johnsons in the world, but I'm sure you, right, there's only one you. Uh, but if you are that person, please say hi. All right. Rohit, how you doing? Andy, please advise on salary negotiation. When you catch the first offer from the employer, what are the do's and don'ts for salary negotiation? When and how do you know where to stop negotiating? Wonderful, wonderful question. One thing that I would do, and I would like everybody to do, because this is not a one size fits all, can package it up in two minutes, give you the exact answer. I have a salary negotiation playlist. As part of that playlist on YouTube, there is insight into upfront what to do, when you fill out the application, when you get asked what's your expected salary, what to do along the way, how to how to tee up the offer counter all of that stuff is put in different little videos and it also there's probably one lengthy live office hours one about uh, why you don't get paid what you deserve or something like that and then there's one about you know kind of the five steps to maximize your compensation but but to 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 be fair to you here when you are getting an offer there are certain principles of negotiation. I did not make these up. These are psychologically sound, proven by institutions that do this every minute of every day for many, many decades. There are certain things about negotiation in general, but negotiate, you know, and salary negotiation is nothing different that you need to do. The first thing is make no assumptions. So you need an empty mind. Don't think, well, I know what, like, I, it cracks me up. I got a thousand comments on my YouTube channel this week about how people say, well, I know exactly what I should get paid. You know what you think you're worth based on the informal conversations that you've had with a limited number of people at a limited number of companies, okay? The fact of the matter is, when you go into any job interview process or negotiation process, you have absolutely no idea what that employer will pay you at this moment, because that changes all the time, constantly, based on how badly they need you, how well you kicked ass in the interview, what their candidate pipeline looks like, do they have other people in case you don't accept the offer, and so on. And I have way too many stories, real life situations, where right out of the gate the recruiter said that job pays up to 170, but we're negotiating deals for 260 and 280. So where'd they get the money? There's always places they can get the money. They can borrow it from some other positions. They can create it. They can go into the hole. They can take it out of a recruitment budget. They could do a number of things. So just forget that you know exactly what you're worth because you don't. You don't. You don't know at that moment. It's very transactional. So assume nothing. Second thing is 
you need to get more information until they give you an actual offer with numbers in it you don't have that information right you're still speculating and then they say okay you know you wouldn't tell us your expected salary up front but now we're going to give you an offer what do you want at this point you still don't know where their head is you still don't know how well you did in the interview you might think they might tell you hey you did great but did you know that they really thought you crushed it and you really really have skill that they need or something like that so what you do at that point is you say you know what i feel like this is a great match i want to make this work i want you to make a fair offer to me based on the value that you think i can contribute based on my performance in the interview process give it to me okay put it in front of me then you got more information now you're being patient now you can look at it then you need time you don't do anything on the on the spot unless the thing just totally blows you out of the ballpark then you want time to look at it but a do as opposed to a don't is the minute you get it unless you are absolutely floored you don't accept it you ask them if they've got some wiggle room you just want to get some ideas of of do you think this is the final offer right is there any is there any wiggle room in this and if they come back to you and they say well what'd you have in mind say well i just i don't know i want to look at it in detail because there's a lot of things here even if you just have a salary you still have vacation you have benefits you have 401k profit sharing espps phantom stock whatever all that stuff that goes along with it training courses they're willing to pay are they willing to pay up to three training courses at 10k a pop and so on you don't know what all that looks like even if you think you do so you need to look through it all even if they walk you through it you still need to think it through then what i would do is i would go back to them and i would say okay i i carefully thought this through it's important to use those words i want to make this work i carefully thought this through because you're not coming in half cocked okay that gives me some comfort that you've taken your time and you've digested this now now what okay here's what i want i want you to raise this i want you to raise that and one of the other do's is you give them options to satiate your needs meaning let's say they give you a hundred thousand dollar base salary and a 10k bonus annual bonus 10 percent but you really want okay so that's that's 110 and you want 120 okay let's just say so you could come back and say i need 10k more on the base that's what i want now that's one option or you could say look i want to make this work i'd really like to be at 120 so any which way you can get me there i'm pretty comfortable with that if this is true right so an additional ten thousand on the bonus or uh, sorry additional ten thousand on the base or an additional ten thousand on the bonus or maybe five and five you know i'm i'm a, or, or five thousand dollars sign on bonus and five more like you don't know what the levers are that they have so if you give me options i'm going to feel good because you're not cornering me you're not cornering me saying take it or leave it because people don't like to be put in a corner i want to make it work this is what i will sign for is there a way you can get me there okay then what you need to do is people love assurances so here's what i want here's what i want from you i want i, I want to know what you want because now i need more information right i gave you the offer i need more information you're going to give that to me but what i really want is what's your number your assurance that you will say yes and i want options right i want options and your assurance because the moment i hear andy for 10k more i'm yours and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna rock it together okay when i hear that and you gave me options i like that and you gave me final answer i'm good i'll sign that's awesome because now if i'm not the decision maker and i'm a recruiter and i'm not sensing around with you on this i gotta go to my boss or the hiring official and i gotta say look rohit guarantees me he'll sign if we give him that that's what i want to hear because i don't want to go back and forth then if i give you the 10 and you're like ah oh, i looked this over again those are the don'ts so you got that i hope that serves you those are principal things if you join me in the boot camp we spend 90 minutes of instruction going through how to do all this so it's important because think about how much more you could get paid if you kick butt in the interview and you knew how to you knew how to hash it out you knew how to hash it out so i hope that helps you i love that question and i love that topic because it's very complicated and you all are not master negotiators and you don't do this very often and you don't change jobs very often all right jennifer new timer love it um 
Julio, I think you were asking me any thoughts on that model. I'm not I'm not really sure I love that model at all. You know what? Julio, hit me up in the boot camp if you got a specific question on that. Tim Cole, how you doing? Oh, thank you, my man. The interview intervention book was a huge help in making me feel organized and confident for an interview. Thank you for that. I love it. He's a boot camper. Connie Cotter's a boot camper. Hey, Seth, how you doing? Wow, good day. Twenty. It wasn't a good day. It was a good week, but it's still a high for me, and I am very humbled by it. I, I, I'm glad the word is, you know, I know a lot of you found me way back when you needed to. I always think, I always think people find me when they need to, right? And I do get a lot of, hey, I wish I would have seen you sooner, and I love that, but you found me right now, and that's cool, and I, I love having you all. I really do. I'm going to do my best to try to respond. Um, I, I really do. I really do try. Brian from DeKalb, how you doing? So you're in 28 degrees as well. Maybe it's colder by you. How do you handle inappropriate, oof, how do you handle inappropriate questions by an employer? What are your hobbies outside of work? Do I use this to shrink the world? Oh, you, you, wait, hold on. What are your hobbies outside? I don't have a problem with that. Um, I have a problem with how many kids you have? How many, how many, you know, what's your religion? Um, you know, do you plan on having kids anytime soon? Like, I don't mind um, hobbies. You know, and what I what I would try to do is everybody should be ready for those. And so, so, so wait, so first thing is, Brian, in my opinion, hobbies is not an inappropriate question. I think that's totally okay. And as a matter of fact, I would, I do like to know people's hobbies. And that doesn't mean, you know, cause you like camping and I don't love camping and I would rather have, you know, a hot shower and a whatever. That doesn't mean, you know, I just, I, I, what, here's what most people are interested in understanding about you. And I definitely can say this is how I view anybody. I don't care what your hobbies are or what your passions are. No, meaning, meaning it, none of that would ever bother me. I want to know that you are passionate about something. I don't care if it's reading, camping, fishing, whatever, playing golf, soccer, uh, investing time with your kids and taking trips or whatever, that's totally okay. Now, if you are concerned that some of the hobbies that you have could rub people the wrong way, like I like shooting guns and this and that, you know, or something that you're not really sure how people are going to take. Well, first thing I would say is I would, I would, I would know what my hobbies are because you know what I'm, they are. And then if you need to, um, you know, what do I say, like sanitize that list for purposes of interview consumption, go ahead and do that. So, you know, reading, writing, journaling, this, that, whatever, you know, all those are going to be fairly neutral. You know, I like to go to the gun shop every Saturday and this and that. Well, that could be, you know, you never know what can happen with something like that. So I, I don't have a, I don't have a problem with that. And as a matter of fact, if you are really on your game, chapter four, interview intervention, friending the interviewer, shrinking the world, all that good stuff that we talked about. Obviously, you must have read the book. Um, I, you know, I'd be looking around those offices to see if I could pick anything up like, oh, hey, you know, you're a mountain climber. I love that. Or I'm always, I'm looking to get into that. I would love to hear what you think about it. You get somebody talking about something they love. Like, I actually love talking about job searching. So like, th this isn't fake. I just think it's cool. And I think it, it's really important because this is instrumental in your, ha your overall happiness because people's work drastically affects that. And I love helping people. And this is a medium by which I do that. So I, I just, I would get them talking. I, I don't think that there's anything wrong with something like that. I, I just think the illegal questions are in some of the other areas that we mentioned. Christina, great to have you first timer. And I, thanks for, um, for answering. Yes, Steve, we got a three day run. It's gonna be awesome. Shy town Kate, how you doing? I wonder what part of Shy town you're in. Um, but there, there were some ne negotiation tips on Rohit's question. David, great to hear it. Dan Morris, please send me the links. You got it, buddy. We, they're not. Even <laughs> okay, wait. So wait. Let's say. Can I? Okay, we're coming up on twelve o'clock. Let's go a few minutes because I spent four minutes, you know, kind of talking about stuff. If you are interested in the boot camp for $497, you get the entire boot camp and you get the career accelerator program, which is all packaged. It's all ready to go. You get the weekend live 100 off. So Kara, can we, oh wait, there it is. It's right in there again. 
But drop that in the chat again. That's that. On the live dates, so if you want to join me in March, this is the Mile Walk Academy schedule. So on today we're here. Next Thursday, March 7th, we are in uh, live office hours. Wednesday, March 13th. For those of you who join the boot camp this weekend, we have a live boot camper session March 13th. That's a Wednesday at like 4 o'clock Central, 5 o'clock Eastern. On Thursday, March 14th, I'm here at Live Office Hours. On Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, the 18th, 19th, and 20th, we're going to have a three-day live event. It'll be like this, but I'm going to teach. Normally, for those of you first-time Live Office Hours folks, we I usually teach for 20 minutes or so, and then we take questions for an hour. But uh, being that I had a heavy-duty schedule these last couple weeks, these are kind of special Q&A editions. But the 18th, 19th, and 20th, that's going to be live, public, just like this, teaching, Q&A, all leadership stuff. And then on Thursday, March 21st, for a very modest monthly enrollment, it's just like a subscription, like a Netflix, you can come to my leadership program. And we will get all that out. Um, and then I think it's March 12th, so overlapping all that, we're going to do a nine-day challenge that runs between like the 12th through the 20th. So those nine days. But that's, I mean, it's, I am so like amped and geeked up over all this. I just love this stuff. And you will love the workbook that I'm creating. It's pretty cool. And it, it you know, you're going to get a little video each day. They're small videos, like one minute to four minutes or five minutes. To get the video to, and I'll give you the challenge. And then you'll have the document right there and you can write your thoughts. It's totally cool. And, but you have to opt in because I don't want to send emails to you every day with all these videos because it's just, I, I, I want to respect your inbox. I know I communicate a lot via email, but I don't, want to, I don't want to inundate people who are not interested in that. All right, cool. Thank you for asking me that, Dan. And uh, let's see. Thomas Gilbert, how are we doing here? All right. Stalling out on job apps and not getting replies or updates after the initial application. Best ways to follow up. Yes. Okay, wait. So a couple things. Before you submit an application, I would do everything humanly possible, as I've answered a time or two already this session, to try to find somebody to send your resume to. Now, there are a number of different networking techniques that you can use to do that. If you, on my public pay, on my YouTube channel, there are things like the boss hunting cover letter and some other things that are free. In the boot camp, I give you 10 coded networking templates for any networking possibility. We go through everything. You're targeting your boss, targeting the company, you're targeting a person that works there, you're targeting a friend, you're targeting somebody you recently met. I mean, I give you all the scripts for all that. That's in, that is only for sale in the boot camp. If you find somebody that you can send your resume to, then obviously go that route. Send it, send a cover letter with your resume, and then wait seven days. And then, and then follow up again directly. And I've talked about how to get somebody's name and address. Uh, if you know what company they work at, you can go to hunter.io. It's a website. You type in the company name. It'll give you the email format. Then you can take, you can fill it in. It's super simple. And then what you do is you take in the targeted email address and you go to an, uh, a website called verifyemailaddress.org. You put it in there. It will confirm if that's a valid email address and then you send your stuff. Very high percentages, like over 90%, that's going to be right. And you have a much better chance of getting a response if you go direct. If you go through an app, okay, so that's try that first. If you go through an applicant tracking system and you're filling in the applications and you're not getting, if you get a bong letter, so there's a couple different options, you get a bong letter right away. Boom. Five minutes later or one day later, you get a, a, what looks like a form letter. Nobody saw your application. The system screened you out. You got an automated message. You can assume that you need to follow up with somebody directly. In the boot camp, we, we teach you how to do this, and we get a very high percentage of people that they reach that then respond, even if they accidentally went through the applicant tracking system first. That's one option. If you go through the applicant tracking system and nothing occurs, dead silence, what I would do is seven days later, five, seven days later, I would try to email somebody. Say, I submitted my application in the applicant tracking system. I'm a 
I'm a perfect match for this job because here's my cover letter, here's my resume, thank you for your consideration, and so forth. And if you need to know how to do that, I've got cover letters out there on my YouTube channel. If you go to the YouTube channel, just type cover letter in there, bang, there's a whole playlist, and you can look at those. That's what I would do, but I would... It is about your follow-up and you being organized and keeping track and making sure that you try to target somebody first. If you absolutely cannot, you go through the applicant tracking system and then you, you just keep at it until you can find somebody. But you could, it is super simple to find people these days and use LinkedIn and all that other good stuff. You can do this. All right, Thomas, hope that helps you. Mark Peckney, how you doing? Oh, Keith. You missed the first four minutes, Keith. Come on, full contact coaching with Andy. I love you, buddy. All right. Uh, Julio, uh, this is interesting. You got a question in his interview. One question you got yesterday, something you think it to be unique or curious about yourself, should one give a real and sincere answer? Yes. You, Julio. Come on, man. You you can think, you're a super dude. You can think a one awesome thing about yourself. Everybody out there, all you, you should, I'm, I'm the best dad. I'm the best mom. I'm passionate about this. I give everything to that. I, anything. You, what's your favorite thing? You know, pick something that you just absolutely love that you like, but don't, like I said, don't go telling them you love shooting guns. Uh, or, or, you know, or hunt down. I mean, like, people will get, could freak out. But just, you know what I'm saying. So, Chris Cross is a boot camper. Andy, I accepted a position to be a sales trainer for a B2B lending company based on previous experience with the manager. He quit a week into the job. Should I put it on the resume? Wait, I, hold on, Chris. I'm not sure I understand this. It, you accepted a position... And then your boss quit. And then you're asking, should you put it on the resume? Um, did you, Chris, did you, Chris, tell you what, since you're a boot camper, I don't know if you quit or whatever. Can you just go into the, go into the boot camp and, and, and just put it in the comments and then I'll answer it there for you. By the way, that's another thing about if you guys, are, you know, you hear me talking to some of the boot campers, you get, you get lifetime access to the product. You get access to me and my counsel in a private forum, so it's like having me at your fingertips. So he could just go there and ask me and I just tell him what to do. We've negotiated salaries this way. We've done a lot of stuff. So it's it's free lifetime support to me until while I'm alive. So, you know, the boot camp is not just the sessions and the stuff, it's also all the support. But Chris, you know what, Click, go ahead and you're not limited in the boot camp. just tell me what happened and then I'll tell you what to do or what I think is a good way to think it through. Trent Doyle, you are not too old, my friend. 58, been doing it, no certs, depressed. Tell you what, figure out what energizes you related to what it is that you're doing. Meaning, you know, is it would being more educated, more practice, more experience? And, and please, please, you're not too old. We got, so I'm, I'm 52, I'll be 53 this year. We've got people in our programs, in the free programs, in the paid programs, in their 70s, late 60s and 70s, that are reinventing themselves. It, 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 you know, it's up here. It has never been easier in the history of the world to become better at what you do, more interested in it, find more resource for it than today. And tomorrow, I'll be able to say that again. So, I, I mean, no. You do not need a lengthy answer. You are not too old to, to succeed. There's no such thing. There is absolutely no. I changed careers at 50. And, you know, I mean, I had to learn a lot of this that I didn't. I mean, I knew my content, but I didn't know how to do all this. You can do this. And 58's not old. Oh, Steve, I don't know. That's interesting. I don't know of a Canadian site, but I would. Oh, uh, that might. That remote jobs one that Kara posted. Um, I don't know if that's just for the U.S. All right, wait, I think, I think am I, am I caught, am I only in like 11.05? Kara, am I in the right spot? 
I'm trying to go a few more minutes here. I can't. Um, can you just let me know, Kara? Am I in the right spot? I'm at 11:06, Myron. Boy, you got you guys got here early. I thought I got that. I think I'm on Jen Johnson. Okay. There were oodles of questions right out of the gate. Yeah, you know what? It's interesting because, uh, you know, obviously there's st there's still 130 people here. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'll get, by the way, because I'm going to go another five. Um, if I do not get to your question, YouTube records this stream. And it's, it's, it's a lot. I mean, it's it, you don't even have to wait. And you can go right to the comments. So once we click off, the video will be processing. You can still watch it. Uh, but you can go into the comment section, just at, ask me your question. And what I try to do is I, I try to answer them over the weekend or, or even later today because I appreciate you coming, right? I appreciate you coming. I love this stuff. This, this is awesome. I mean, I live for this stuff. So if I don't, get, I know there was a lot of people. I know there's a lot of questions. But if I don't get to your question, just take it and move it into the comments. And I will do my darn best to get in there and give you some, give you some help. All right, Jen, Jen Johnson. Changing careers, want to find a job teaching accounting at the college level. When my kids were little, I homeschooled them. Absolutely. Can I include these teaching skills on my resume? Yes. So one of the things that um, there's nothing wrong. By the way, I give you a resume template. So J Jennifer, if you do not have that, get it. But for anybody, I give you the base template. If you have unique situations like this that are they're nifty, they're cool, they're beneficial to highlight. There's nothing wrong with below your professional experience saying additional ex additional relevant experience. Uh, you know, homeschooled kids. And what I would do though, uh, Jennifer, is I wouldn't just say I homeschooled the kids. I would, I would highlight what it took to homeschool them. So did you have to work with, so, by the way, I do not know, I do not have children. I do not know what all that entails. I'm just, roll with me on this. If if there is some interacting with the school system, with, you know, grade schools, high school, whatever it is, you know, worked with X institutions to optimize the curriculum, so on and so forth, tailor the curriculum for my children, you know, work to make sure that they were learning the right things to pass tests and so on. Everything that went along with that, I think, is important for people to understand that you have experience working in that framework and in that e ecosystem, so to speak. But yes, I, I, I would definitely do that, for sure, of course, for sure. So wait, I, I'm wondering if some folks were repeating, maybe I'm just getting confused because I'm seeing some of these. Oh, Douglas, you know what? Uh, Douglas Haley, why do companies wait so long to tell you yes or no after an interview? It's been three weeks. They have not responded to emails. A thank you email and an update email. All right, I, I want to cover this one. Douglas and everybody else, um, when you get done with an interview, I know this is not always possible, but this is what you want to try to do. You want to make sure that you ask the person if you're interviewing with somebody, what's next? Okay, so you could be interviewing with HR. You could be interviewing with a teammate. You could be interviewing with just somebody else who's rolling around the office. You could be interviewing with your boss, your boss's boss, and so on. I would always ask, what would be next in the process? Now, they might say, oh, well, you know, if, you, if it goes well today, you're going to go talk to so-and-so. Fine. Um, actually, well, we're going to go to HR. We're going to give them their, our, and the recruiter. We're going to give uh, him or her our feedback. And, you know, they'll, they'll contact you. That's fine. They might not know, but you should always ask. Okay, great. When you get to the quarterback of the process, whether that's the hiring official, the recruiter, the HR person, or whoever, you say to them, okay, uh, what's next? When will I hear from you? These are fair questions. When will I hear from you? Okay. If they say two days, you give them the two days. If they you don't hear from them, you email them the third day because it's a tight window. If they say within seven days, you wait the seven, you give them a couple extra days, you email them, and so on, okay? You, you, you go based on what they told you. If they say, hey, Douglas, we've got three other candidates in the process. 
So what we're going to do is we're in the second round of the interviews. We need to get everybody through this. Fine. Do you Is that scheduled and targeted? I just want to make sure for my planning purposes because I have other things going on or whatever. And I would be clear with them. That is okay. You're not being pushy. You're not being pushy. They owe you that. Now, I don't know why you know, these specific companies are not like the best companies. They not only get back to you when they say they're going to get back to you, but if if the thing goes outside of a week, meaning it's going to take me another week, like I got to go, I'm still planning this and that, I would email you and say on Friday and say, you know what, Douglas, thanks. I just want to let you know, we've got a couple more candidates. We've got an interview early next week. You should be hearing from me by Thursday. Like that's the best because then you know. And what most people, you will stay mentally engaged and you, most people I find, are okay if the time frame is out, if they have something to look forward to, if they know, you know, there's kind of a flag in the ground. But I can't answer, I don't know that. But if you, but as you continue to interview, I would make sure that you are asking those questions and you are proceeding accordingly. And bud, this is not in your control, right? What's in your control is asking them for the information. And, and, and for me, if somebody, if I'm interviewing and I spent my time and nobody responds to me for three weeks, when they call me back, I'm not going to be too happy. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to question whether I really want to work there. Now, I, obviously, I don't know your situation, and everybody's situation is different, and so on. But these are these are not good signs. The recruitment process should be awesome. Think about it. it's kind of a first date stuff, right? Like, and then it's usually down downhill from there. <laughs> All right, Kelly Kennedy Lapping, my boot camper. Hi, Andy. Three interviews this week. Awesome. Working my Andy plan, your boss hunting force. Oh, thank you so much. All right. Wow. Tony R. Oh, wait. This looks like a pretty good in insight. Having trouble finding an email format for one of the boss hunting cover letter with hunter.io. Was able to locate zerobounce.net. I love that. Kara, please, let's, let's, um, can we... Uh, let's make sure that we add that into the documentation. Let's check it out. Let's use it for our purposes too. <laughs> All right. Let me see if I get one more. Carrie Freeman, could I reapply to posted jobs on Indeed except when my new, with my, yes. Go ahead, Carrie. New Andy resume. Go in there. Folks, um, there's two things you got to know about social media and about resume submissions. No matter how many times I post something throughout a day. You, my greatest people in my community, still could not possibly see everything, pay attention to everything, watch everything, and notice everything. So people worry about, am I flooding too much content? It's impossible. Same thing with resumes. When it goes into an applicant tracking system, if, it, if there is absolute dead silence and you, you don't know if it was seen or whatever, you revamp that resume, go back in. First off, Carrie, I would actually, I mean, I would try to do what I said before about targeting somebody. But if you're going to resubmit it and you've never heard, go ahead. The new format might trigger something. I would definitely watch that three free tools uh, for your resume to beat the ATS video that I shot. Uh, it's, a, it's a good one. We got a lot of great feedback on that and it, it's, wor it wor it's working. All right, folks, listen, I got to run. Uh, happy Friday. I will see you next Thursday. A bunch of you will get an email from me on Tuesday with a with a with a cool thing, and um, and then I'll be back at live office hours on March seventh. You got till Sunday night at midnight Central Time because our system works on my time zone. That coupon live one hundred off expires on Sunday night. So if you're interested, this is the last chance till April. So till like mid April. Uh, to get in that stuff. So, and and we've got a boot camper special uh, event on March 13th. So, for all my boot campers out there, we'll see you then. And for everybody else, hopefully, we'll see you next uh, next Thursday. All right, take care. See you soon.